Oh, for God's sake, Carol, what's the panic? Somebody broke into this place, pyro engines. But what did they do? They took nothing. Well, that's not the point. There's not a thing out of place. I've got a dozen things more urgent. Well, according to the assistant commissioner you have, this is his top priority, all Scotland Yard's working on this. A small aircraft engine firm has intruded, so for the love of Mike, we get this sort of thing all the time. I'm only doing what I'm told. The politicians have got into the act. We've got to give them the answers. Well, we can't help them. No one can. You've got nothing to go on. Absolutely nothing. But it looks like a case for room 17. Room 17? What do you know about that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I suppose I shouldn't have... Well, damn it all, gentlemen, we've, we've all heard the rumours. Room 17. Sorry, Sir Geoffrey. No progress. Oh. I've got half the cabinet breathing down my neck. Well, may I suggest, sir, uh, room 17? You know, I can't discuss that with you, Superintendent. All right, you can go. Hmm? Prime Minister's office, sir. Red telephone. Hmm. Norton here. No, I'm afraid the conference came up with nothing. Yes, I realize our aircraft industry cannot afford even the possibility of a leak. I was wondering, do you think this case would interest Room 17? Well, I know they're not technically under police jurisdiction. Right, I'll get in touch with them straight away. Personally. Get me the Special Research Department, will you? I want to speak to Room 17. Practically sound, Demuck, but you may regret it strategically. Will you cope? Reluctantly. Prime Minister's been at you. And the Ministry of Aviation. Sir Geoffrey, I have the greatest regard for the Ministry of Aviation, despite its capacity for producing soaring estimates rather than aeroplanes. But what exactly do you wish us to do? I told you on the phone two days ago. And, uh, oh, thank you. Sent you the papers. And I told you that uh, your people at Scotland Yard could perfectly well cope with a routine case. This like is this. not a routine oh. case. Tyro defectors are always stealing plans. What I cannot fathom is why firms of the standing of Spyro Engineering, ridiculously apt name, uh, don't take more care. Yes? Thank you. We sent your bag wash to forensic. You did what? You wanted to know if it had been photographed. Yes, but I did. It has. <sighs> that bag wash you sent to forensic for all to see is the complete specification for the most sophisticated rocket engine ever made. Luckily, forensic aren't sophisticated. Their speciality is identifying dandruff. Apparently, the sensitized paper on which your stuff was printed has turned brown at the edges. Yes, it does if exposed to bright light. 
Don't we all? This is hardly a matter for levity. No, I'm sorry, Norton. I'm not prepared to work further on this. The problem doesn't hold my interest. But it doesn't mind, Olden John. Industrial espionage seems to me a fruitful field for inquiry. Day, no potential enemy is involved, you understand, but it's a matter of extreme delicacy. No legal proceedings, no prosecutions. The microfilm just recovered. Right. We'll see what we can do. We? Oh, uh, he'll come round. The Times leader will put him in such a vile temper, he'll forget he was tetchy with you. Meanwhile, here's my list of suspect firms. Burbank Airplane Engines, Los Angeles, Aviation Nationale, Lyon, Smith Farrington Limited, Boscombe Down, Wilts, and Sturmfurt Works, Frankfurt. Sounds like an evil NATO joke. There was an American firm, a German firm. But what industrial spies do you know, Sir Geoffrey? There was that uh, man, Peter Nash. Uh, you know about him? He it. was a PRO for Smith Farrington in New York, dismissed for suspect dealings with rival firms. Uh, yes, I I've met him. Good. Then I should interview him. Meanwhile, we'll stir the pot and watch the bubbles as they come up. Uh, uh, yes, well, uh, I'll be going along. Dimmock, Spurs are at home to Hamburg in the third round of the European Cup this afternoon, did you know? <sighs> Morning. I've been summoned. Mr. Nash. I repeat, unfortunately with my morning coffee. Your erstwhile employer was desperate to make my acquaintance. Oh, Sir Geoffrey, Mr. Opal has just phoned. He's booked into the Ritz. He said he'd like to meet you. Well, tell him I'll see him at the reception this evening. Uh, this is Mr. Nash, Sir Geoffrey. Mr. Nash? I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. I understood the matter was urgent. I believe you scraped acquaintance with a friend of mine, Lady Franklin. What am I suspected of now? Not quite certain as yet, but Mr. You're Nash. But you're confident something will turn up. Possibly. And you invited me along to ask me what it is. Well, let me keep you in suspense no longer. I haven't the faintest. Lady Franklin's country place is near the Spyro Engineering Works, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You can account for your movements during your stay. <laughs> Someone's been poaching again. I assume you no longer have any connection with Smith Farrington. My contract as you are undoubtedly well aware, was concluded to our mutual satisfaction some time ago. I see. Uh, I think that's all. Very well. Morning, Sir Geoffrey. Mm, by the way, I wasn't aware that you were a soccer fan, Mr. Nash. I'm not. Hmm? Rugby union occasionally, but uh, only occasionally, Sir Geoffrey. But if the dear pretext takes no interest in soccer, my observation was quite lost on him. And on me. I thought you were working on this. According to the Times, which is usually reliable in fact, if not opinion, Max Opals arrives in London this morning. Opals? The post-war West German boom in person? Yes. Now, he does interest me. Oh, perhaps you'll agree to do some work. I have. Opals has taken his customary suite at the Ritz, numbers 204 to 206. What have we got on Opals? Everything. The Germans have a who's who of their own. Hmm. He's chairman of the Stormfoot Works. Amongst many others. He also loves soccer. I imagine he's come over to watch Hamburg beat Spurs and collect the microfilm, aren't you? Yes? Really? Thank you. Either the assistant commissioner is more devious than I thought, or... If you have a bomb, Oldenshaw, kindly drop it. Peter Nash has just booked a room at the Ritz next door to Max Opal's. I think Sir Geoffrey may have been a little indiscreet. Why? I have a feeling that Mr. Nash is about to do some work for himself. Thanks very much. Thank you. happened again. I can't find the semicolon. It cannot take this long even for her opals to change. Oh, I've been all over the keyboard. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Barnum. Surely you must be aware that we cannot keep British Foreign Office officials waiting indefinitely, especially to go to a football match. Nothing interferes with his bath, sir. He usually has one about this time of the day. <sighs> Now, sir, do you think this is good enough? 
cannot intend to present this for signature misuse. At the German embassy, it would not be allowed. It's really most inadequate. I know. Well, I don't know why he engaged me. I'm a singer, you see. Contralto. Well, they're very rare. In Wales. Ah, uh, there you are, Fritz. Right on the dot as usual. Teutonic efficiency tailored by Savilro, no doubt. Dear boy, I've done it again, have I? Do forgive me. Are we terribly late? Rather late, sir. and his party are waiting below, Herr Opus. You shouldn't be so worried about protocol, Herr Bannerman. Oh, Miss Hughes, you'll hold the fort while we're shivering at the match, won't you? Oh, yes, sir. There's a good girl. Bannerman, mustn't forget this. Can't have you going out into the world half-closed. Yes? Oh, I'm afraid you've just missed him. Look, if you'll hold on, I'll try to catch him. Mr. Barnaman! Catch him up, please. Oh, no, dear, you've just missed him. Oh, dear. We might still catch him in the lobby. I'll get out if you like. Oh, no, I wouldn't dream of trouble. Well, it's, it's no trouble. No, thank you. People have been kept waiting. Yes, I know. Me. I was one of them. Perhaps I can help. Uh, the phone. It's all right. It's probably the office. Bannerman, you say. Yes, they asked me to hang on in case something came up. Possibly an itinerary change. You know, something of the sort. Yes, yes. Sir. Well, Bannerman just left. Do you want to leave a message? Yes, of course. I'll get him to ring you back. Yes. As I expected, our office. Merely checking to see everything went off all right. Protocol, you know. <laughs> I must say, I was awful putting the olive of the mess in the sweep of the Dorchester. Much more his style, I should thought. Still, he's not exactly picking it here, is he? Dreadful lamp there. That painting. I thought they could have done better than that. My God, look at the time. Uh, sir? Uh, Peter, the other half's Nash. You must be Glynis. How do you know? What does your watch say? Uh, uh, half past two. Half past two? I'm famished, and you? I have a sandwich. You can't go to work on a sandwich. An egg, perhaps. Come on, let's start around the grill. Oh, but my letters. Look, I'm terribly... Behind. Your work must be on a full stock. Anyway, I've got to stay here till Bannerman returns, so I might as well look after you while I do. All right. Make yourself beautiful. Phew. I did knock. May I finish the bed? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon. Remember, they ask for everything, including the sweepings and the cleaner. Right. Jeffrey. I understand you're less than sanguine about our methods. Methods? What on earth makes you think Herr Opus is a suspect? It's absolutely nonsensical. Private detectives dressed up as chambermaid. What have we got there? Contents of Herr Opus' waste paper basket. I explained emphatically that this case must be handled with tact. Oh dear, we've never been noted for our tact, have we, Dimmock? We find it a great time waster. In no circumstances must Herr Opus be interfered with. Uh. Why are they not? The minister's instructions are quite... The minister's instructions are quite explicit. Nonsensical, nonetheless. You know, this girl's typing is... It's almost creative. It's quite splendid. Uh, news, Dimmer? Traces of film negative have been found in the dust our maids collected from Herr Opel's room. You see, chambermaids have their uses. I would suggest that this proves conclusively that Opel's is directly involved. Oh, by the way, I hope Peter Nash is reporting back to you. Uh, what? Oh, haven't you been told? He's staying at the Ritz, too. Don't be... Really? Oh, dear. Well, perhaps I'd, I'd, I'd better... Uh, yes, you'd better. And perhaps you'd better go back and mollify the minister. Uh, yes. Good afternoon. The secretary bird, Glynis. 
French bird, don't you mean girl? Well, the words are synonymous nowadays. It's a lower class word, much favoured by the middle class, who wish to be thought upper class. Oh, God. I see she attended a uh, Bach festival in Dusseldorf as a member of the Welsh National Choir. The festival was financed by her opals. Well, he wouldn't want us to think he made rockets just for money, would he? She can't type. Mistress? What do you think? No, poor girl. Why don't we make her an offer? What? To double her prison salary. Opal's reaction might be interesting. What a good thought. It's curious how your imagination blossoms when a female appears on the scene. No, me. I thought of it first. Don't be childish. This will be my privilege. I shall speak to her like an uncle. Libidinous uncle. The word is libidinous, dear boy. Libidinous. No, not you. Oh, yes, sir. Just one, sir, for Mr. Bannerman. Are you all right? Oh, yes, sir. Everything's fine, thank you. Good. Well, see you in the morning, then. Oh, Mr. Orpels? Yes? Uh, there is one thing. Might I have a word with you, sir? There is something wrong. Oh, well, no, sir. Yes, sir. It's just that I'm leaving, sir. I've been offered something else, another position. I see. Well, it's not that I'm dissatisfied with you, sir, or quite the opposite. But, well, you see, this thing's come up and it's nearer home. You'll be going back to Germany soon, and, sir. And uh, when did this other thing come up? This afternoon, sir. Who offered it to you? Oh, that's confidential, sir. Part of the contract. I know it's awkward, my leaving you like this, mm. so suddenly. They must have made it uh, very attractive. Yes, sir. More money? <laughs> of course. Yes, sir. <laughs> How much more? Double, sir. Fifty pounds a week. But I must start right away. Doing what? Secretarial work, sir. I was surprised. I did tell them about my typing. They didn't mind? They said it didn't matter, sir. All right, Miss Hughes, I'll double what they offered you, and what's more, I'll give you a substantial severance settlement. Let's say, one thousand pounds, when you leave me. A thousand pounds? And I will only need you for another week. It would be most inconvenient to lose you at this stage. They want you so badly, my dear. They will wait. Oh, I'd love to stay. Thank you very much, sir. Good girl. Good night. Give me the German embassy, please. At once. Furthermore, Opals has complained to his embassy. Are you there? Hello. Yes. With this ridiculous attempt to procure his secretary. I don't think you're taking this thing seriously at all. I order you to drop everything connected with Opals. Is that clear? Concentrate only on finding the microfilm. So, dear friend, if you wish this affair to be handled in a conventional manner, I suggest you contact your subordinates. Goodbye. Anything further on Glynis? Yes. She must hold a powerful hand. We doubled, Opals redoubled. Fifty pounds a week and she can't distinguish between a tabulator and a margin release. It's intriguing, isn't it? I'm glad you squashed Norton. He invited it. You know, this man who got into the Sparrow aircraft offices and photographed the file. It must exist. Researcher working on it. Research need waking up. My dear lady, you have had four hours in which to find one photographer out of 500. Where is he? The list is now five, sir. They're in the process of being interviewed. Why is the process taking so long? No, I'll do it. Give me their names and telephone numbers, please. James Merton, Cavendish 1284, Arthur Bell. Yes. Bell speaking. A German client. Now, I've never had one. Rocket engines? Yeah, who are you? I see. Well, what is the proposition? Yeah? Max what? Just, just a minute. 
Yeah. Opals, yes. Where? Yeah. Right. Uh, how much would you pay? Uh, that is, if I agree to do it. I see. Well, I'll think about it. Uh, where can I contact you? Right. Goodbye. My name is Bell. I'm a photographer. I did a job for you recently. Uh, I think you must be mistaken. It was a rather dangerous assignment to... to do with rocket engines. There's been some trouble. Well? Oh, I can't talk here. Very well, come in. And please be brief, Mr. Bell. I have an appointment in a few moments. Oh. Well, I I've been thinking the stuff I photographed could be worth more than I thought. Uh, what stuff are you talking about? Oh, come off it. I know you're behind it. How could you know? Somebody's been giving you wrong information, my friend. Now, off you go! One moment. Hello. I think you ought to hear my proposition. It might be unfortunate for you if you don't. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Assuming for the moment that it is only an assumption that I am implicated, you appear to be blackmailing me, Mr. Bell. I'd prefer to call it a business proposition. Then what are you selling? What I have in my safe back at my studio. I am fond of surprises, Belle, and you apparently have one in store. Could it be? Of course you have some negatives. Correct. And how much do you think they're worth? Ten thousand pounds. You're a greedy man, Mr. Bell. <laughs> and what do these negatives contain that they are worth so much? You know very well. The specifications of an advanced rocket engine. Surely whoever employed you would have made sure that he obtained the negatives as part of the deal. Oh, certainly. That I took the precaution of giving you copy negatives. If I was indeed your employer, you must have forgotten that one of my companies makes film. I'd know an original negative if I saw one. Ah, but just this once. You might be mistaken. <laughs> just this once. Techniques change. New, new methods come on the market every day. You ought to know, you sell the stuff. It is possible, yes, it is conceivable. You're going to have to pay to find that. Ten thousand pounds. Oh, it's a lot to be taught once. Business. You don't expect me to have that much cash on me? Oh, no. But I do as soon as the banks open in the morning. Oh, hello, Mr. Bannerman. Uh, see you in the morning, then. Wait a minute, Mr. Bannerman. Ah, Miss Hughes, I'm glad you're in. We are leaving for Frankfurt tonight. Would you please come around to my suite and do not either leave it or allow anybody in under any circumstances. Do you understand? Open to no one. Good. Right, Herr Bannerman. We'll be on time for a change. Thank you. 
Yes? Ah, Mr. Bell. How did it go? I'm afraid I'm not going to be of much use to you. Oh, yes, I went to see Opals, but he swore he didn't know what I was talking about. As a matter of fact, I couldn't even swear Opals was the man who employed me. I'm terribly sorry. Yes, I could have done with that money, too. Still, it's the thought that counts. I see. Oh, well, it was just a thought. Goodbye. That's what I expected. Leave the snow away. Nonsense, sir. Well, the fact that Opals isn't at all to Bell means that he's our man. And on top of that, Bell is uh, double-crossing us. He's probably extracting a lot of money from Opals. How perfectly splendid people are. Special research department. Could you tell room 17 that Nash has just left the hotel? He's following Bell. I think they ought to warn him. Goodbye. Can I help you? Yes, you can. The safe keys. What's the idea? Quick. Silly. better go. Mr. Opals will be furious. Are you going somewhere? He's flying back to Frankfurt tonight. Is he now? And you're going with him? I think you might have told me. I didn't say I was going. Oh, yes, you did. You've got such an honest face. Peter, you'd better go. I've got work to do. Well, I thought we got on so well at lunch. Is this Opal's only suitcase? Yes. Oh. Trevor was light, wasn't he? What are you doing? Peter, you can't do that. Mr. Opals will... Max Opals has some very important microfilm, and I want to know where it is. Well, it's not in the suitcase. It's not in the suite. So that leaves you, doesn't it? I don't know. You're not a secretary. You can't type. You don't even know the first thing about the job, do you? Now, why does he pay you a hundred pounds a week, eh? Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> Glennis? Glennis? Glennis, why aren't you parking? We've only 50 minutes. Now keep your mouth shut, darling, and you'll be all right. Now you have some microfilm. I'll kill you to get it, if I have to. I, uh, I burned it. 
That photographer had the original negatives. He was lying. I had the only set of negatives and I burned them. Well, they've got to be here somewhere. You've been through this place already. You'd have found them had they been here. I've looked everywhere. Strip. I don't have them on me. Strip. Still no answer. Nasty thought something's happened to Bell. You could be out. Nash is a crude but effective operator. I'd say dead. I think it's time we paid some attention to Nash. That was rather humiliating. The exigencies of the service, Herr Lippels. She doesn't know anything. Now, he gave you some film to take to Germany. Now, where is it? Where is it? German ambassador to demand apology foreign minister re gross interference and insults to her opals. I cannot repeat not accept responsibility. Norton. Ah, Sir Geoffrey. Did I wake you? <laughs> Hysterical of you to telegraph. Thank you very much, however. What exactly did you mean by gross interference? <laughs> Really? Oh, how very high-handed of it. Oh, no, no. It was you who instructed Nash. He merely advised, if you remember. However, if you wish to prevent severe repercussions upon yourself, why don't you get one of your patrol cars to go and pick up Nash? What? He's wanted for murder. Somebody called Bell. I can't say you're being very high-handed. I've imagined you're going to receive the perfect money. Very sorry to disturb your snooze. Huh? Well, I'd better see Opal safe out of the country personally. Well, you'd better hurry. Well? They leave for the airport in about 45 minutes. Oh, I'd better have him set to the airport. Norton. 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 Give him our good wishes. The aisle is full of noises, sounds and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Do you know Nash forced Mr. Opal's to strip naked? <laughs> You know, I like, I like Norton's euphemism, gross interference. Dimmock, this negative is solid fact. It has physical shape and being. You cannot smuggle photographs of 400 pages of scientific script and formulae out of the country in thin air. Reduce it in size, he may have done, but something must remain. Unless he memorized it. 400 pages of engine data. No. So it's a thought. Quite thought, Dimmock. Oh, good evening, Sir Geoffrey. Good evening. Uh, here, Opals, I'm most terribly sorry about the trouble. And so you should be. Now she's being picked up at this very moment. I take it you'll want to prefer charges. Not necessarily. You surprise me, sir. I'm leaving the country. There is no point. What are you charging him with? Just about everything, including murder. He'll be away for a long time. 
You don't say one fails, one is disowned. Isn't that how you security people put it? I'm not with security, Herr Opals. <laughs> I beg your pardon, my mistake. You know, I assure you, sir, Nash has no connection whatsoever with either the police or our intelligence people. <clears throat> Glennis, fetch your bag, my dear. We are leaving. He's booked on a flight at 11.30 tonight. I still plump for Glynis. She was paid too much. Nash went to endless trouble with her. Hmm. Do you think she's auto-suggestive? I said she'd welcome anything. Don't worry. We've been asked to take this seriously. So we were. Hypnotized, possibly. Hmm, possibly. Look, I'll need some help. You take these. I want everything relating to drugs for combat fatigue cases. Also, how they were developed by the Chinese for the interrogation of U.S. prisoners of war in Korea. They'll be leaving for the airport. Ten minutes. We'll need more time. Ah, oh, this girl. Ah, oh, there you are, my dear. Barnum, ring for the luggage to be collected, will you? Certainly, help us. Hello? Oh, Sir Jeffrey, it's for you. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. <coughs> Norton, here. Yeah? You found a what? Oh, yes, I see. Uh, yes, all right, I'll tell him. Uh, Herr Opals. Yes, I'm here. I'm afraid there'll be some delay. Why? That was London Airport. They've had an anonymous phone call about a bomb on your flight. A bomb? Yes, I'm afraid regulations stipulate that a thorough search be carried out. And how long will it take? About an hour, I should say. An hour? Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Is that it? Yes. Now we can become practical. A surgic acid derivative. A very appetizing. I can't stand needles. They make me faint. <clears throat> no needle on this one. It injects through the pores of the skin, leaving not even a pinprick for evidence. The latest witchcraft. Now, uh, go and lie down over there and roll it for sleep. Oh, I wish I'd never agreed to do this. You sure you wouldn't uh, care to... Uh... No. Too old, too ugly. Lie down. Move over. Now, produce that arm. Are we uh, relaxed? Oh, don't gloat. Do it. Counting. One, two, three, four, five. Splendid. Now, let's see. Yes, this looks fairly involved. Can you hear me? Dimmer, can you hear me? Yeah. Now, from now on, I want you to repeat everything I say to you. You always wanted to be a Svengali. Always wanted to be a Svengali. Give me red 42, can you please? Uh, Holmes, sure. I'm on an outside line, but I've just been on to London Airport. There wasn't any bomb. No, don't deny it. It's perfectly obvious that you were behind this. You want me to do what? No. I'm sorry. I, I cannot be a party to this. Very well, I shall have to do it myself. Very well, I have to do it myself. Thirty minutes late and she has to powder her nose. I've sent for a police car. It's the only way I can be sure you'll get there on time. Excuse me, I'm the hotel doctor. Are you Miss Hughes? Yes. 
Were you in South Wales recently? Yes. Oh, I see. I've been told that you've been in contact with a typhoid case. I must examine you. Oh, dear. <laughs> Look here. This is all very fascinating, but we have a plane to catch. I'm sorry, sir, but I must insist. Come this way, Miss Hughes. But... I'm sorry, sir. This is intolerable. She may be a carrier, sir. He's only doing his duty. His duty! Can't you do something? It's out of my hands, I'm afraid. Oh, excuse me, sir. This is for the doctor. Oh, thank you. Yes, Norton here. Norton, H has the doctor arrived? Good. I want to speak to him. I hope you're prescribing the right treatment. Uh, doctor, would you pick up your extension, please? Yes? Who? I'm sorry, I don't think I... Oh, really? Yes, I've just had a package delivered. Well, I hardly think that's ethical. Oh, I see. Very well. What are you going to do? Oh, nothing, my dear, nothing at all. But just to be on the safe side, I'm, I'm going to give you an inoculation. What's that? Oh, a vaccine that'll make absolutely sure. We can't be too careful, can we? Oh, but I hate needles. Oh, don't worry, my dear. It won't take a moment. Ah, Doctor. Ah, Doctor. She, she's under, is she? She's under, is she? Good. Uh, will you call Sir Geoffrey and ask him to listen very carefully to all that follows? Oh, would you please come in, Sir Geoffrey? Oh, certainly. I'm coming in, too. Oh, I don't need that to be done. I insist. I have Sir Geoffrey and Mr. Uh, uh, Opals. Mr. Opals with me now. Will you place the receiver next to Miss Hughes here? Yeah. Will you place the receiver next to Miss Hughes here? Now, Miss Hughes, can you hear me? I can hear you. It's perfectly simple. You listen very carefully and repeat everything I say. Sir Geoffrey, I don't know what you're doing, but I insist that you stop them immediately. Well, please be quiet. Control yourself. Control myself. I've been hounded ever since I arrived in this country. You have no right to inflict this on an innocent girl. Experiments with rocket engines. Burning solid fuels. Burning rates. She's off. 5 centimeters to 0.5 centimeters per second have been obtained during recent experiments. Your flight leaves in 22 minutes, Herr Opals. Thus breaking the present narrow limits between 0.1 and 0.5 centimeters per second. A new oxidizer has been found with low heat decomposition. It is in the ammonium nitrate group. 80% ammonium nitrate. Are you off now, Herr Opals? Yes? How about Miss Hughes? She will be remaining in England. But I thought you wanted her in Germany. Yes, I did. But her usefulness has come to an end. See that she gets this. Will you? I've learned a lesson this evening, which is cheap at the price. One that Europe has been learning for 300 years. Never 
underestimate the British. Good night. Wake up, dear boy. Perfect captive audience. Hello. Alenshaw. Did it work? Brilliantly. We've stopped our precious information leaving the country without so much as a ripple on the diplomatic pool. LSD. See? The answer to a schoolboy's dream. You too can pass your exams in a drug sleep. Ingenious man, I hope. Have to, boy. It reminds me of a story. Did I ever tell you of a turtle who applied for a job at a circus? Oh dear, have you recovered already? It's a very clever turtle. For a turtle, it's an American story, of course. It just contains some universal truth, are they? When the turtle applied for the job, the ringmaster asked him what trick he could do. So, show me a rope, said the turtle. And they dangled a rope right down into the center of the ring, and the turtle promptly climbed right up it. Yes? But he didn't get the job because he couldn't do anything when he got to the top. Is that all? I laugh at your jokes. Yes, it's uh, peculiar, isn't it? Which hand? Dimmock. Dimmock? Mm-hmm.